And now, the best 60-ish seconds of your week. And in this increasingly crazy world in which we all live, March Madness has been supplanted by the other madness we've seen all around us all week. Began on Tuesday with folks expecting a arrest of Donald J. Trump, because that's what he said might happen. And folks, there was never going to be an arrest. There might have been an indictment, but there wasn't going to be an arrest. And there's no indictment. As of the taping of this, there still is no indictment. And it looks like Alvin Bragg, the district attorney of Manhattan, has a very, very, very weak case, even by his own office's reckoning, because it appears anyway that they're putting the brakes on moving forward on this thing. I mean, look, there are all sorts of problems on the legal side, including statute of limitation problems and the fact that this probably doesn't qualify as a state crime, but rather if there is any crime as a federal matter. And it was a misdemeanor, a lower level crime, allegedly, which he wants to upgrade to a felony while at the same time taking felonies on the street crimes and downgrading them to misdemeanors. This is the nuttiness of the woke left, and this is a Soros-backed candidate who became the district attorney of Manhattan. Whether or not that case ever comes about, this much we know. He used to be in the U.S. Attorney's Office there in the Southern District of New York. They've had this case for seven years, including more than two while Donald Trump's been out of office, and they've taken a pass on it. That ought to tell you a lot. The fact is, this is a political case. And we've said so many times here on the best 60-ish seconds that whenever you politicize or otherwise misuse the justice system, every American ought to be concerned, and all of us certainly should be. And politically, think about this. If he is actually indicted, I think it helps President Trump politically. It will galvanize his base and it will lead a lot of folks within the Republican Party in particular, but on a broader scale as well, who may not be all that thrilled with President Trump to say, look, this is craziness. This is just plain wrong and move to defend him. So the left and the woke left really ought to watch what they wish for because they just might get it. And later in the week on Thursday, we saw congressional hearings over TikTok. You know, this is really a fascinating situation because even sensible Democrats are joining in with Republicans and saying we ought to ban this communist Chinese led enterprise. And what's the response by the ultra left Democrats? Oh, this is racist. It's this, it's that, it's the other thing. Somebody described this as the Trojan horse. And the only thing I could say is it's much, much more than that because folks didn't know what was hidden inside the Trojan horse. We know what's behind TikTok. We know what the Chinese communists are up to and we know what they're after. And so to have this platform openly available, our kids going to it, et cetera, is just craziness. It's hard to imagine that we allow this kind of thing to go on. And it looks like Congress on a bipartisan level might be ready to take some action. And in another small step away from the nuttiness of the woke left, Stanford University's law school put on administrative leave, i.e. suspension, the dean of inclusion and whatever it is, diversity and all this other stuff, who called out a federal judge. Think about this. In a law school setting, she stood up and took on a federal judge at a time when she was supposed to simply be there to defend his right to speak and to not be heckled by ultra leftist students there of the National Lawyers Guild, which by the way was once identified long ago as a communist front and hasn't changed too much through the years. This is what we're dealing with on our campuses. The craziness that we've had to deal with that has permeated society and permeated our culture and led to our political systems is really frightening. America really is at risk and there was no better example of it than Stanford's law school a few days ago. Thankfully, they've at least initially done the right thing there. Hopefully, this one will be dismissed and the students there, who by the way, don't want their names used, although they were happy to quote unquote out the members of the Federalist Society who invited the judge, uh, hopefully they'll be called to account as well. And Jerome Powell and the Fed once again raise interest rates this week and the markets take a gigantic drop as a result. What's interesting is that everybody knew it was coming, wasn't any great surprise, and so you have to wonder why the precipitous sell-off the day that it was actually announced. But the underlying fact of the matter is this, no matter what Jerome Powell and the Fed try and want to do, 
They are simply avoiding the problem, which is the incredible spending that took place under the early days of the Biden administration that have launched this incredible rate of inflation. While it's coming down, it's still astronomically high and is hurting the American economy, hurting American consumers, hurting American families and their budgets. And we have nothing to thank uh, for it but the fact that we spent six trillion dollars that we didn't have. And we close out by discussing the other March Madness and all sorts of craziness across the basketball landscape this past week with a 16 beating a one for only the second time in history and Purdue knocking out an awful lot of people's brackets. So many have been smashed to smithereens by low level teams beating top level teams or highly rated and seeded teams in the tournament. It's what makes March Madness so much fun. And by the time you're looking at this, the final eight will be halfway set and we'll be moving on to the final four and the best weekend in college basketball. And while we're talking about basketball, a sad note this week with the passing of Willis Reed, the giant of a man who played center for that championship team of the New York Knicks in the early 70s. Who can forget game seven against the Los Angeles Lakers where Willis Reed could barely walk onto the court because of an injury, but he came out, took center stage, led the Knicks to a Game 7 victory over the Lakers and an NBA championship, their first for a long, long time, and a great man off the court as well. He passed away this week and will be sorely missed. May he rest in peace. And for now, that is the best 60-ish seconds of your week.